Good afternoon. You are in the web applications track. Um, this is the talk, How I Met Your Girlfriend, and I'm going to leave you in the capable hands of Sammy Kankar. Thank you. Welcome, everybody. Uh, this is How I Met Your Girlfriend. Um, it will hopefully be a little more interesting or less interesting, I'm not sure. But basically, we're going to talk about some pretty cool attacks and how I met your girlfriend using those attacks. Uh, just briefly, a little bit about who I am. Uh, I am, what's so funny? It's just Lady Gaga. <laughs> I am a security researcher for fun. I do it on the side. Uh, I love it. It's great stuff. I get to meet great people like you guys um, and learn a lot from you guys, too. Uh, you may know me as the author of The Sammy Worm on MySpace a couple years back. Um, it was a, a virulent XSS worm. Uh, I co-founded the company Phonality. We make IPPBX phone systems. Uh, if you're familiar with Trixbox, uh, we developed that and, and some other really cool phone systems for small to mid-sized businesses. And uh, I love Lady Gaga, but I'm going between Kesha and Lady Gaga right now. They're both so amazing. <laughs> anyway, a couple of years ago, I did that uh, just a little, a little more intro. I, did that MySpace worm, and it got me in a little bit of heat. So I ended up getting raided. Uh, the Secret Service came to my house. They took all my computers, my cell phone, so on and so forth. Uh, about a year after that, I lost all computer use. Uh, basically, no computer use ever. Um, and did the whole probation. It was like, it was like AOL in real life. Um, <laughs> And unfortunately, I was, not, I was not allowed to go on MySpace anymore. Uh, so sorry to all the tweens out there. But after, after a couple of years, I was able to get it all reduced. It's all revoked. I'm, I'm back to normal. I'm a regular guy. I'm allowed to touch computers. I'm allowed to have an iPhone or Android, whatever. And uh, I'm back. So hopefully, I have some cool, cool new attacks for you guys that, that should be interesting. So what am I going to talk about? I'm going to talk, be talking about the web. Um, the reason I'm talking about the web is I don't think the web is necessarily the most interesting thing. I think uh, there, there's so much cool security stuff going on. You, know, you have hardware hacking. There's so many good talks this year on you know, phone privacy and GSM. And um, you know, there's obviously reverse engineering and, and so many other topics that I personally think are really interesting. Uh, and I don't mean to pigeon myself, pigeonhole myself into web. but. You know, with that said, the web does a lot of really cool stuff for you. You know, you have web browsers, which are basically, it's a code distribution channel. You have this application that is running on every person's computer in the world. Every single person in the world is running this application and can execute your code. It's like when Apple came out with the, the App Store, right? They made a distribution channel to run other apps, whether they be malicious or not. But the App Store does, uh, they do sanity checks where the web doesn't. So it's just amazing what you can do with the web. Another thing is it's so powerful. You can, uh, you can talk in so many ways that even your web browser doesn't know that it's, that it's communicating. So we'll get into that in a little bit. So as, as I typically do, you know, I'm usually just browsing on social networks as these talks often start, <laughs> looking at pictures of girls. And uh, I see this amazing woman. Anna Ferris. Uh, I'll have to thank Arsh Arshan, Arshan. <laughs> uh, Arshan de Bursiagi for this one. He introduced me to Anna Ferris. Um, and ever since, I I've been in love since yesterday. So I <laughs> so made my talk, and I had to bring her in. So as I was checking out her profile, I was like, man, I need to, I need to meet her. Right? She looks like the kind of girl I want to know. How do I meet her? And when you're on Facebook, you know, the first thing you do, you try to go to the pictures. It's restricted. You try to look at her info, maybe. I usually don't look at the info. I just look for the pictures. But at that point, I go to the info, and I say, ooh, in a relationship. I'm like, ooh, that's not good. You can't. It's harder to meet someone when they're in a relationship. It's not in an open relationship. It's not complicated, unfortunately. <laughs> So who is this guy? So I look, up, I look him up. I look, look into who he is. He's some big shot, 
certified information security specialist professional, CEO of Sec Theory, co-author of this awesome book called XSS Exploits, Cross-Site Scripting Attacks and Defense, author of Detecting Malice, co-developer of Clickjacking, which is really cool, with Jeremiah Grossman, who is also really cool, Skyrunhackers.org and Slackers.org, certified ass. I think we can, we can all agree he actually has the certificate application security specialist, it's true. A man who needs no introduction, Robert R. Snake Hansen. Don't clap, don't. Um, now, this is a problem, right? He is dating this amazing woman who I think would really like me if she got to know me. <laughs> but it's really hard to get in there. So, how do I systematically destroy their relationship? <laughs> the first thing is, you know, I know a little bit about computers and, and obviously security, things like that. You know, maybe I, can, maybe I can attack him. Maybe I can attack him, do a little manipulation there, and then go after her. The problem is I'm dealing with a pretty tough target. Right? This guy obviously understands security. He's probably much more secure than, than most people. He probably, you know, I don't know, turns off JavaScript and does whatever he can, runs all the, uh, all the security software, has a firewall, so on and so forth, and probably doesn't click on you know, Farmville ads that often, <laughs> uh, even for the extra points. So, I can't, I really don't think I'll be able to attack him. You know, obviously you can attack anyone if you try hard enough and you spend enough time. There has to be an easier way. I can attack a target who I know is secure. So, you don't attack the target, you attack what they use, right? Every day we're using other things. We're using our cell phones, we're using websites, we're using our bank, whatever. So, let's do that. What I want to do is I want to get into our snake's Facebook. That's my goal. So what are we going to do? I'm not going to XSS him, right? He's not going to fall for that. He's not going to fall for some CSRF on a page. He's probably not going to enter his credentials into a, a website that, that uh, ends in .ru. Um, well, except that one time for that mail order thing, but. <laughs> so Facebook, we'll, we'll take a quick look here. Facebook, if you look, is run by PHP. Today, it's actually, uh, some of you are probably familiar, it's actually running something called Hip Hop, which is their own impl implementation of PHP. I think it compiles PHP into C++. It's not full PHP, but it's, uh, it's, I think, most of it. I believe it's open source at this point. But anyway, they're running PHP. So why PHP? Well, it's an extremely common web language, right? I'm sure all of you are familiar, at least heard of PHP. Lots of websites use it. It's very, it's very easy for development. There's lots of rapid development frameworks for it, like CakePHP, uh, Kohana, CodeIgniter, things like that. Uh, it, it's easy to get a website up and running really quickly. So what we're going to look at is PHP sessions. PHP sessions are, uh, are basically what happens when you Type in, when you go to a website and let's say you authenticate, for example, you enter your credentials and you get a session. Typically that session is a, a random string and that's either passed in URL or it's passed in a cookie. So cookies, they allow us to, they allow a website to store information locally to you to essentially track you as you browse through that website. And more complicated ones will allow you, will allow tracking across multiple websites, but we won't get into that. Um, the cookie basically allows you, you know, you go to a website, you log in. When you go to another page, it doesn't have to re-authenticate you. It already knows that you're logged in. So, why don't we look at PHP sessions, PHP cookies. Let's see how those work. So, I ripped open PHP. PHP is open source, so we get to take a look at, you know, all of the source code. So, here what we see is basically the session start function. If you're familiar with PHP, you may have used the session start function. It's the de facto standard for starting a session in PHP. If you already have a session established, if as the client 
uh, if you have the session established, it'll reuse your existing session. Um, essentially what you get is you get a random identifier that's stored locally, and then the server will contain all the actual session data that's, that identifies with that random identifier. So if you look at this function, one thing really happens. The, the, the primary thing is you get a random string, and that random string is produced in this PHP session create ID function in session.c. We're just gonna go, we're gonna go over a little bit of C code, um, and we'll, we'll go into some other stuff after that. But if we see here, we're doing, we're looking at a couple of things. You can see we have, uh, we create this buffer, and it, it in, includes a couple of different things. It includes the remote adder. That's your IP address. That's 32 bits. 32 bits of randomness, entropy. Then what happens is it takes the epoch uh, from the get time of day. So basically, the seconds since January 1st, 1970. How many seconds has that been? That's what the epoch is, or Unix time. That's also stored in this random identifier. Um, after that, microseconds. That's another 32 bits. Microseconds is basically how many microseconds in a second. So as soon as you, let's say, go to facebook.com, you type in your username, you type in your password, and you authenticate, you get this cookie. They take your remote ad, at your IP address, they take your epoch, the time you logged in, they take the microseconds from the system, the time you logged in, and they also use this thing called LCG value. This is just a random number, that's 64 bits. Um, after that, they also SHA-1, which is a type of hash. Uh, they also, it may MD5, it may use SHA-1, you can also use your own um, hashing if you'd like to basically hash that random string and produce this random identifier that's unique to you that basically says, you know, I am whomever, I'm logged into Facebook, and I would like to, from now on, you know I'm logged in, so I get all my permissions or, or whatever. The same thing happens when you log into your bank. So if we look, again, here's how much entropy we have. We have IP address, 32 bits, epoch, 32 bits, microseconds, 32 bits, a random value, 64 bits. It's a total of 160 bits. Um, if you SHA-1 that, you still get, uh, SHA-1 is also 160 bits. So if I were to brute force this, for example, there's no way I'm gonna get it. Just a, a little primer, I'm sure a lot of you are, are knowledgeable in this, um, but a lot of the time, you know, especially, especially in web, we don't have to deal with bits, and bits kind of get confusing. It's like, is 64 bits twice 32 bits? Or is, it's a lot more, right? But how much more? So we'll just do a quick primer on bits. So for every 10 bits, a good rule of thumb is add three zeros. So if you have 10 bits, that's 1,000. 20 bits, a million. 30 bits, a billion. Um, and then for basically the low number, 0, 1, 2, 3, you basically can start. So for example, 5 bits means 32, right? 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32. Um, or 2, 4, 8, 16, 32. So if we have five bits, then that's 32. But if we have uh, 15 bits, we take our three zeros and the 32 and you get 32,000. Um, that's a, a quick way to get an approximation of what you're looking for bit-wise. So what is 160 bits, right? You know, you hear people, you know, they crack 110 bits in a year. Well, that just means 111 bits will take two years. It doesn't necessarily mean, you know, 128 is still way far off. So 160 bits, if we could, let's say, brute force 100 tri trillion values per second, 160 bits would still take 900 quadrillion eons. I had to look up what an eon was. It's 500 million years. Um, but Brittany will tell you. She knows what's going on. So again, 160 bits. MD, uh, sha one doesn't help us. We still have a 160-bit unique identifier. This is your cookie. It's good that it's big. It's hard to brute force. It's hard for someone else to go and say, you know what, I'm gonna try to guess a random session value of someone else and steal their credentials. Or maybe break into their bank and you know, steal their, uh, you know, transfer some money around. Buy some more girls on brides.ru. Now, let's go over this a little bit more. It's actually not so pseudo-random data. If we look at microseconds, microseconds is only, there are only a million microseconds a second. So you're actually dealing with zero to 999,999. Well, 20 bits, if you remember a rule of thumb, 
there's six zeros, so that's a million.